Hi friends, today I am giving a lecture on algorithm. So now we have to discuss the following concepts in this video. What is algorithm? What are the properties of algorithm? How to evaluate the algorithms? How to analyze the performance of the algorithm? What is a pseudocode? So these are the what is the difference between algorithm and program? So these are the points we have to discuss in the in this video. So an algorithm is a step by step procedure for solving a given problem. Suppose we can take a problem. So to solve that problem, what are the steps we have to follow? So these steps are performed in sequential manner. So then the collection of these steps can be called as algorithm. So suppose, suppose we want to make a T. So to make the T, what are the steps we have to follow? First step is First, we can take a bowl and add some water into the bowl. Next, boil the water. Next, add the tea powder into the bowl. Again, boil it. Add some sugar into the bowl. Again, boil it. Finally, add some milk into the bowl so then finally we are getting the tea so these are the steps we have to follow to make the tea so in the same way what are the steps we have to follow the collection of these steps is called an algorithm so each and every algorithm has some properties First one is input, second one is output, third one is finiteness, fourth one is defineness and fifth one is effectiveness. First one is input. So each and every algorithm can take zero or more inputs. Output, each and every algorithm should produce at least one quantity as an output. Third one is defineness. Each and every instruction of an algorithm should be clear and without any ambiguity. Next one, finiteness. The algorithm should terminate after some finite number of steps. Next one is effectiveness. Each instruction of an algorithm should be feasible. So, these steps can be carried out by pen and pencil. Next, each step an algorithm should be completed within a finite amount of time. So, these are the properties of an algorithm. Next, how to evaluate an algorithm? So algorithms can be evaluated based on the performance. So the performance can be measured by taking the efficiency of an algorithm. The efficiency and performance of an algorithm can be calculated based on the time taken by the algorithm to complete the execution and space taken by the algorithm to complete the execution. So these are the points we have to consider while calculating the performance or efficiency of an algorithm. So evaluating algorithm or performance of an algorithm can be broadly classified into two categories. First one is priori estimates. Second one is performance measurement. So priori estimates can be done before executing of an algorithm. 
okay so this estimation can be done before the execution of an algorithm that is called as priori estimates next one performance measurement so performance measurement can be done after executing of an algorithm so what is the difference between priori estimates and performance measurement priori estimates can be done before before writing of an algorithm posteriori testing or performance measurement so that can be done after execution of an algorithm so priori estimates is also called as performance analysis posteriori testing is also called as performance measurement next priori estimates or performance analysis so performance analysis mainly deals with one is the space complexity and the second one is time complexity so space complexity of an algorithm is the amount of computer memory required by an algorithm to complete the execution of an algorithm so the space complexity can be calculated by using by using sum of two components first one is a fixed part and second one is variable part so s of p is equal to c plus s suffix p where c is called as fixed part and s suffix p is called as variable part s of p is the space complexity of an algorithm so the brief discussion can be uh, see the previous video that is space complexity next time complexity of an algorithm is the amount of computing time required for completing the execution of an algorithm is called as time complexity so time complexity is represented by t of p so t of p is equal to c of p plus r of p c of p is the compile time of the program or algorithm r of p is the runtime of an algorithm or program p so how to calculate the time complexity of an algorithm by using step count method so this will be discussed in the previous video please watch that uh, space complexity video and time complexity video next how to specify an algorithm so an algorithm can be specified by using three components first one is natural language so in the natural language the algorithm can be uh, specified by using a simple english language so that is called as so natural language specification of an algorithm next second one is pseudo code pseudo code is a mixture of natural language and programming language constructs here we are using some english sentences and here we are using some programming language constructs so the mixture of natural language and programming language constructs is called as pseudo code third one is flowchart flowchart is a graphical representation of an algorithm so why while representing the an algorithm by using flowchart the following symbols are used so the first symbol vowel shape start or stop next one rectangular shape so it represents the processing third one is decision box it makes a decision whether it is the decision is a true or false and next one is connector so this connector is used to connect two symbols so by using these three natural language pseudo code and flowchart by using these three components we can specify an algorithm next there are two types of algorithms first one is a sequential algorithms second one is a parallel algorithms 
in sequential algorithm instructions are executed one after the other in parallel algorithms instructions are executed in parallel manner so here an algorithm is a step by step procedure for solving a given problem the properties or characteristics of an algorithm are first one is input zero or more number of quantities should be given to the algorithm as an input so each and every algorithm can take zero or more inputs second one is output an algorithm should produce at least one quantity as an output so after taking zero or more inputs then algorithm should produce at least one quantity as an output third one is define as each instruction of an algorithm should be clear and unambiguous so each and every step of an algorithm should be write in a clear manner without any confusion next fourth one is finiteness so an algorithm should terminate after some finite number of steps so after some finite number of steps the algorithm should be terminated next effectiveness each instruction of an algorithm should be feasible that it can be carried out by pen and pencil each instruction should each instruction to be complete that the instruction can take some finite amount of time and memory next evaluating algorithms how to evaluate an algorithms algorithms can be evaluated based on the efficiency the efficiency of an algorithm can be measured by taking the performance into consideration the performance of an algorithm is broadly classified into two categories one is priori estimates for our performance analysis second one is posteriori testing for our performance measurement in priori estimates the performance can be calculated before the execution of an algorithm in posteriori testing the performance of an algorithm should be calculated after executing of an algorithm next the performance analysis mainly deals with the two components one is a time complexity and second one is space complexity time complexity of an algorithm is the how much amount of time taken by algorithm to complete the execution next one space complexity how much amount of computer memory required by an algorithm to complete the execution of an algorithm this is space complexity so space complexity is nothing but how much amount of memory it requires to complete the execution of an algorithm next how how to specify an algorithm an algorithm can be specified in different ways so some of the algorithm specifications are first one is natural language second one is pseudo code third one is flow chart so natural language so by using natural language we can easily specify an algorithm so natural language is nothing but we are using simple english language sentences so for example we have to perform addition of two numbers so in this one by using natural language specification so the first step is read the first integer a second step is read the second integer b third step we have to perform the addition of a and b and whatever the result we are getting that result is stored in variable c fourth step is display the result in display the result that are stored in variable c so this is the natural language sentences 
So this is the specification of natural long waist for performing addition of two numbers. Next one, pseudocode. Pseudocode is a mixture of natural language and programming language constructs. So here we are using some natural language sentences and we are and also we are using some programming language constructs like programming language statements. So that combined we can form a pseudocode. So therefore pseudocode is equal to natural language plus programming language constructs. So for example, so this is the pseudocode for performing addition of two numbers. So algorithm, algorithm name is sum. So it can take two parameters. So A and B. So here problem description is this algorithm is used for performing addition of two numbers. Next input is we can take two integers so that two integers are stored in two variables, variable A and variable B. Next output, after performing the addition of two numbers, whatever the result we are getting, that result is the output. Next here, brace begin, C assignment statement A plus B. This is a programming language constructs. So this is a assignment statement. So what is the meaning of this assignment statement? First, we have to perform addition of A and B, that is A plus B. After performing addition, whatever the result we are getting, that result is assigned to the variable uh, that, uh, that assigned to the variable that are on the right hand side. So that is C. So whatever the result we are getting variable C, that result is displayed by using right statement. Okay. So here we are using someone's one more statement, read C, not C, sorry, read A comma B. Next, third, third algorithm specification is flowchart. Flowchart is nothing but it is a algorithm or graphical representation of an algorithm. So the algorithm can be represented by using some graphical symbols. So then we can say that an al the graphical representation of an algorithm is called the flowchart. So these are the symbols we are used in flowchart. So start or stop. So for this part, we have to start the algorithm or we have to stop the algorithm. For that purpose, we are using bubble shape. Processing. Processing, we are processing means that is execution of the statements. So that statements can be put in rectangular box. Next, this is a decision box. It is either yes or no or true or false. So for that purpose, we have to take a decision. For that purpose, we are using rhombus symbol. And these are the connector symbols or direction symbols. Okay, next. So types of algorithms. There are two types of algorithms. So these algorithms are classified into two types based on the way of execution. So first one is sequential algorithm. In sequential algorithms, algorithms are uh, in sequential algorithms, the instructions are executed in one after the other. Next, parallel algorithms. In parallel algorithms, instructions are executed in parallel manner. So these are the uh, specification and the types of algorithms. Next, this is the notion of an algorithm. So suppose we can take a problem. Okay, so first we have to understand the problem carefully. Okay, understanding the problem is nothing but, so what, what the algorithm can take, what are the inputs that algorithm can take and what is the output an algorithm produce. To produce this output, what we have to do. So this is nothing but problem analysis. So once we are analyzing the problem, so then we are going to the problem statement. 
so problem statement is nothing but what is the problem to be solved so that is nothing but problem statement what is the problem to be solved once we have to once we have to go to the problem statement so then we have to construct the algorithm based on the given problem once the algorithm is created that algorithm can be converted into some programming language statements you can take either c language or c plus plus or java language okay we can take any programming language so the algorithm is converted into some programming language statements next so these programming language statements in a particular language so that can be assigned to the computing device that is computer so then the computer can execute that program by taking the input okay so here while we are uh, giving the input we have to take some we have to take some suggestions so okay so what type of input we are given to execute the particular program okay so after taking the inputs then the computer can execute the algorithm then it produces the output okay next we have to test we have to verify or we have to test so this algorithm or program produces the correct result for the given input so if it produces the correct result so then we are the, we are getting the solution to the given problem then if any errors are occurred okay now we have to observe what are the inputs we are given so if we are given valid inputs or not check whether we are giving valid inputs or not if we are giving the valid inputs to the computer then the computer process the programming language statements then it can produce the correct result if it does not produce the correct result so then we have to check the programming language statements and check whether the whether we are given the correct input or valid input or not okay so these two points keep in mind so while solving the given problem okay so this is the notion of an algorithm so thank you thank you for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe my channel divela srinivasarao Thank you.